Welcome to another episode of In Your Business. Today we're going to meet with an entrepreneur that I'm going to learn a lot from. It's Farmer Brad. And when I heard about Farmer Brad, I thought I'm going to be very interested in finding out exactly what it is he does. So I did a little research and I'm still wondering what he does. So uh, bringing him on the show, getting him to share with me, getting him to share with you, and kind of get an understanding that he's truly an entrepreneur in so many different ways. So Brad, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. And so it's interesting because as I started asking people about Farmer Brad, um, they always smile and they say, he's coming on your show. And, <laughs> and I say, yes, he is. So uh, today's show might be very interesting to learn about what it is you're doing and how you're doing it. But one thing I know just from the interactions is that you enjoy being an entrepreneur. Yes, yes. My mind is always thinking about the next thing and uh, always, always thinking about uh, entrepreneurship. Well, that's outstanding. So what I always like to do on the show is get to know you from the time when you were just a little guy and then figure out, you know, uh -huh. how you became an entrepreneur. So when you were a little guy growing up, what did you want to do? Uh, so initially I want to be an astronaut, but then I found out that you had to um, take a lot of advanced classes and um, possibly become a pilot and different things like that. Uh, so in third grade, I had a teacher that asked me if I wanted to learn how to build websites and after school program and I said sure so started building websites for the school and that continued on uh, to my uh, degree at Taylor University I graduated with computer science and new media systems so at a very young age I was geared sort of towards that track in my life Wow, so just a little guy, you're gonna be an astronaut and you get in the third grade start building websites and continue that on the rest of your life Yeah. That's outstanding, you know. You didn't have the internet and the websites when I was in third grade, so, yeah. so you were, certainly had the advantage on that. Yeah. But uh, So you went on to Taylor, earned your degree, and um, what is your degree in? Computer Science, New Media Systems, so a little bit of audio, video, graphic design, and computer programming. And part of the reason why I liked web design was because you could press F5 to refresh the browser and see your results a lot quicker than some traditional um, computer programming. Okay. So what was your hopes when you graduated? What did you want to do? Um, I, I really wanted to build websites. Uh, if I knew uh, then what I know now, uh, websites have just, everything is changing all the time with websites and how to build them. Uh, I feel like very little what I learned in college um, existed exists now okay. um, and so it was all about learning to learn um, as things change well, that's interesting to do as an entrepreneur because yeah. things change daily for us yeah. and and so being able to, to acknowledge the fact that you learn to learn and learn how to change that's yeah. that's important so yeah. now I'm curious because I don't know why farmer Brad why are you known as farmer Brad so this all started when my wife and I, we lived out in California, and the house that we were living at had a large enough backyard. Um, and there um, was a chicken coop already built there um, that her uncle had, had left there. And uh, so I got into uh, raising some chickens in uh, Southern California. And um, I saw that the farmerbread.com website uh, URL was available, and I snagged it up. Um, and so it started with uh, raising some chickens in Southern California and a garden. Uh, and then I gave up on the garden because of the uh, drought and the heat and it was hard to keep up with it. Um, and so uh, an opportunity came up to work remotely for a company and that allowed us to relocate um, to Indiana. I didn't grow up in this area, but I grew up in Indiana and knew that that was a place for affordable housing and a great place to raise a family. Um, so I brought three chickens with me from California, a dog, a cat, uh, and my family, and we relocated uh, to Wayne County um, uh, to be close to my mom and stepdad. And um, the place we purchased uh, is just under eight acres and has a barn, and so it was a great fit for doing something with chickens. <laughs> so, so you brought three chickens from California yeah. to Indiana. Yeah. And I want I want to understand that because I don't know anything about chickens. Yeah. Um, but why would you transport the three chickens back here? 
Um, well, because I had them and had 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 uh, built a an emotional bond to them, um, and so I built a transport um, crate that was a little snug because when we were moving, it was uh, November, and they were going to be going through a. Um, probably a 30 degree temperature swing going from mm -hmm. California to Indiana at that time. And um, so I wanted them to be snug. Uh, they had food and water and they seemed to be pretty comfortable because uh, when I would check on them periodically um, in the back of the moving truck, uh, there was eggs laid and they seemed content and fine. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's excellent. So, so you brought the chickens back here yeah. and when you arrived back in Indiana, which I'm glad you did, yeah. you, um, you started Farmer Brad here, is that correct? Yeah, so. What's that look like? It initially started, um, I had some uh, chickens that were uh, breeds that were geared towards egg laying, and so I thought, okay, I'll sell some eggs, and feed costs were uh, getting pretty high, and it takes uh, about 17 weeks before uh, the chickens will start laying eggs, so you have all that upfront costs, I figured I need a way to offset this uh, since this is a hobby at this time. Um, so I was looking around online for different things that need innovation and I had thought, man, these chicken waters that are out there, they're priced pretty high. I can, I can make a better one. And so um, that sort of started the ball rolling with that. So basically, as an entrepreneur, yeah. our job is to solve a problem. Yeah. And so you're trying to solve a problem of basically how to water the chickens. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It also stemmed from um, having a day job and trying to fit uh, chores in uh, and having limited amount of time. So I wanted to try to automate it. Um, and so uh, that's how I came up with the automatic chicken water bucket. So you were working a full-time job and mm -hmm. then also taking care of the chickens and the farm and the family and yeah. everything that goes with it. Okay. Yeah. So I want to understand that. So you created a product. Yeah. And that product is with us. Is that correct? Yes. This is the uh, first uh, version of it. Uh, and I looked on Amazon and I saw a lot of five-gallon buckets that didn't refill. And I was like, there has to be a better way. So this, you hook up to the garden hose, and then it has a float valve inside, similar to like the back of your toilet, where it will refill automatically. Okay. And then um, on the bottom, there's these little uh, chicken water nipples that the chickens peck at, and it's able to give them some water. And then you can just hang the bucket um, for the uh, first version of the bucket. So this is a two gallon? Yes, this is a two gallon bucket and uh, then it has a removable cap so that you can uh, refill it during the winter time when you use a heated element. So you can feed a heated element down in there so the water won't freeze and then just have to manually refill it during the winter time. Okay. But during warm weather you can just hook it up to a garden hose, set it and you're good to go. It's outstanding. Yeah. So you came up with this idea, and then this is the next generation? Is yeah, so I, I got some customer feedback saying that, you know, having the garden hose right here on the side creates a lot of tension and, and stuff and doesn't give you really uh, very much flexibility with getting the, the water to the chicken water. So the last summer, uh, summer of uh, 2018, I came across uh, this configuration. So this is a reverse osmosis hose, uh, similar to what people have underneath their kitchen sink. Um, it, and what's nice about it is there's all these adapters with uh, these quick connects. Okay. And so I can easily uh, put that on there. Uh, let's say I need to extend it. I can uh, put an extender on there. Or even let's say I want to um, connect two chicken waters. I can just easily snap that on there add another one and you're good to go. Um, so it gives a lot of flexibility and it also helps me to be able to field um, calls from cu customers that have the bucket on, on their, ha on their um, that they've purchased and to be able to field any of those questions over the phone to be able to help them uh, have success with the chicken water. And so the reverse osmosis hose goes to the float valve and then uh, we have it in here similar to the other one. Okay. Uh, I went with a side water nipple here 
And part of the reason for that is during the winter time, if you're refilling it, sometimes the bucket can get a little heavy. So by putting it on the side, you're able to sit it down on a surface sure. when you're manually refilling. Okay. So it's interesting because it seems like you have a lot of things going on. Yes, I do. And you're not just an entrepreneur, but you're also an innovator. Yeah. Because entrepreneurs can buy a business, entrepreneurs can start a business, they can have a business, but you're keep adding to it. You're creating new products. Yeah. So like yesterday, um, I've had a customer call me and say that they were concerned about the water in their garden hose being too hot and stuff. And so yesterday, I just thought of a way of putting two buckets together and then spinning about uh, 30, 30 meters of this uh, reverse osmosis hose, have it go around it and then put ice in the bucket and then pour some water. And then that would be an easy way of just cooling down that water before it gets to your water. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm always thinking about different things. So you're a problem solver. Yeah. And that's yeah. good. That's very important as yeah. an entrepreneur. Yeah. So. Let's jump into this because, again, the thing that I like to teach at the university is all the components of being an entrepreneur, the things that go into it. And one of the things here is pricing. Yeah. How do you price this? So uh, you compare uh, what others have out on the market, and then you realize um, the service that you're providing. So um, you could go out there and buy all of these elements yourself, and, and I, it's no secret on how I put it together. I had a couple YouTube videos um, that it showed exactly how to do it, but what I do is I end up buying all the parts in about 100, uh, so I can build about 100 at a time, and that gets the pricing down to where it's reasonable. Um, and so this first one, I think I underpriced it on my website, but um, since I went to redesign this and I have a premium product and premium parts, mm -hmm. um, I was able to, to sell this for a premium price. Okay. Um, and it really makes it worth my time, my limited time that I have to make these. Um, and I've gotten great feedback on my website um, w from customers saying, um, I'm so glad I came across this because it saves us time and it's built well. And that's the other thing, uh, since my name is Brad Wood and I'm putting my name on this as Farmer Brad, I want to make sure that any bucket that goes out is going to work. And because I'm putting my name on it, I want it to work. And so customer service is very important to me and making sure that happy customers um, are there because uh, I don't want any bad news or any bad experience to come across because it can just tank the business. Sure. So pricing is answered, promoting. It sounds yeah. like you're using YouTube, but how do you get your word out there? So um, I started off with a YouTuber, uh, SSL Family Dad, and at that time he only had about 70,000 subscribers. And I just contacted him and said, hey, would I be able to send you a bucket? And to make it worth his time so it's not just him getting a free item, mm -hmm. I said, um, here's a promo code that you can have and you will um, save your viewers uh, a certain uh, amount off the price, and then I'll give you a royalty for each sale that you send my way. Sure. That promo code also gave me the ability to be able to track how many people are going through his videos um, to my site. And I started that with uh, the first version, and um, I think I got 35 sales from that. Um, well, now he's like 120,000 subscribers, and I didn't have to pay him for it. The only thing I paid him was the royalties. So um, he was the first one that I did it with, and uh, it's been great. And then I've tried to periodically um, each year uh, send it out to two or three more YouTubers um, because each YouTuber kind of has their own set of audience um, and niche and try to, try to get it out the word out there for them to, to buy it. So your main way of promoting the bucket is YouTube? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, um, and then I'm also able to track on my website um, knowing, okay, most of my traffic is coming from these YouTube videos, and then this is um, where, where the traffic has come with um, the promo codes as well. Okay. So back to Farmer Brad, though. Yeah. The buckets. Yeah. What percentage of your business would you say that is? Um, I would say 
probably 75 percent um, okay. because I was I was thinking the other day uh, at the farmers market um, I go and set up and sell my pasture raised chicken and I I can sell two of these in a week, and that's pretty much how much I would make at the farmer's market. So it's like, and it takes me about 20 minutes to make four of them. So it's completely worth my time to invest and help promote the automatic chicken water bucket. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing with the locally raised, pasture raised poultry that I, it's more or less to provide a service to the Wayne County area to help promote healthier options um, with the chickens. Okay, so let's talk about everything that you're doing because yeah. I know you've got a lot going on. Yeah. So you have the buckets. Yeah. You're raising chickens. Is yes. that Correct. Yes, I'm raising chickens for meat. Um, and the nice thing about those is during the winter time, it's chickens I don't have to take care of because they're already in the freezer. Um, I do raise some uh, chickens that are geared towards egg laying, and that is for chicken rental. Um, packages. Um, and what that the goal with that side of my business is it allows people to try uh, backyard chickens risk-free for three or six months. And uh, I provide the coop, the hens, the feed, the water, and deliver it within a 50 mile radius for um, free delivery. And uh, if at any point they realize, oh wait, this was a terrible mistake, um, they just give me a call. I take everything away and then we prorate a refund um, after that. And then at the end of the rental period, they can also um, buy it out and just keep everything. Uh, so it's a really good way for families to um, see whether or not backyard chickens are a good fit for them. The other thing too is I try to source the hens so that they're gonna start laying on day one of their rental. So you don't have okay. to wait the 17 weeks before um, the uh, chickens start laying the eggs. So the difficult work is already done. Yeah. By the time you get the chickens, so if I rent chickens from you, yeah. they're going to be, I'm going to have fresh eggs the next day. Yes. Um, I mean, sometimes there may be a day lag um, just with uh, transporting the chicken. Uh, the chicken might um, just take a little while to get used to the new environment. But yes, um, I've had it where 12 minutes after I've delivered the, the chicken coop, there was an egg in there. Oh, wow. <laughs> for the customer, yeah. Okay, all right. So when a person, I mean, I, I have to know a little bit more about this, Yeah. but when a person rents chickens, do they rent a chicken or several chickens? How does that work? So the packages are set up uh, two or four hens for three or six months. And based off of um, the length of your rental and how much you're paying, uh, really determines the price of the buyout option at the end. So if you okay. paid more up front, then your buyout option is less. Um, and stuff so so that's the other side of being the entrepreneur is putting together those packages yeah and how do you do that how do you figure out what's going to be marketable yeah so um, it's part of the reason why I have um, egg layer birds um, and I have to keep on sort of raising them and putting them in the incubator so I have birds of various ages um, because I don't know when a when a customer is going to uh, say, hey, I want to have a chicken rental package. Okay, well, I need to have one of this age to sort of match up. Sure. Now, I do have a supplier down in Liberty, Indiana, that if I'm in a pinch, typically he'll have um, a chicken of um, the right age to, to line up with the rental package. Okay. You've got the buckets. Yeah. You've got the chickens. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Um, I'm also raising uh, uh, fresh produce in my garden and then... Uh, I got an equip grant from the um, government to build a high tunnel, which is uh, kind of like a greenhouse that's not heated. Um, and it's 30 feet by 48 feet. And I'm still working on trying to get water back there. Uh, last year, I just grabbed every garden hose I had on my farm and just ran it back there. Uh, this year, I decided, uh, you know, I'm going to... Um, utilize my resources of my property uh, to be able to get the water back there. So um, on our farm, we have two ponds and the upper pond is spring fed. So water's always flowing and uh, I'm gonna utilize that water to um, store and move water to the high tunnel to be able to use. So that's water that is free, water that I don't have to pay an electric bill for the well pump, and mm -hmm. uh, it will also be full of uh, good nutrients uh, left over from the fish in the pond. 
I love it because you're actually solving yeah. your own problem now. Yeah, yeah. And and so you brought this in. What what is this? Yeah. So this right here, uh, it's a little large, but um, this is oh oh, oh 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 sorry. You're good. You're good. Um, <laughs> this is a hydraulic ram pump. Uh, it was uh, gifted to me from a YouTube channel, uh, Land a House, and it's kind of like magic because it has two check valves and for every foot of drop of water you can pump it seven feet now you lose about 80 percent of the water that goes through this but in my setup it's going to end up in the lower pond anyways so it's a perfect setup so um, what ends up happening is the water comes in here is gravity fed um, and in my case it's a um, the pump, the pond is spring fed, so it will come in here and that water has uh, energy and, and motion. So this uh, check valve slams shut. Well, that water still has movement and energy. So it goes forward and pressurizes this ch uh, chamber here. And then uh, when it equalizes, then it just keeps on sort of pulsing that water uphill. Um, so yeah, then I'll have the water uh, go into a storage tank and then from there, I'll be able to um, direct the water to a particular um, row in my in my high tunnel uh, okay. via like a um, smart sprinkler. Um, and uh, and then the idea is that over time, I can create recipes of what works um, because I also have a device that will analyze the um, pH of the water, and I can adjust the pH uh, as well. So. Okay. Um, is this something you're going to create of? No, or is no. Is this just for your problem? No, this this is um, this is uh, from a YouTuber that I partnered with, um, and so um, I'm also going to review his product uh, okay. in my YouTube videos. Um, and uh, so he's already similar to how I've solved the problem with the chicken water buckets. He's sort of crafted and figured out all of the problems um, to to deal with a ram pump. And so he's building these and selling them on his website and okay, stuff. Okay, okay. And so um, I want to help support another entrepreneur that's doing something similar to what I'm doing with the chicken water buckets. Which brings me to the next point because yeah. it seems like you're very good at collaborating. Yeah. And so you're sharing ideas, people are sharing ideas with you. You're yeah. testing a lot of stuff yeah. for other YouTubers and such. So so, let's talk about that. Yeah, so um, right now with the business, I'm not, uh, I haven't quite hit that break even point. Uh, so what I end up doing is I look for products out there that I think would be helpful for my farm. And I contact the company and say, hey, would you want to partner with uh, my company, send me a product for free, and in exchange, I will make a review video of it, promote it on my website via um, footer ads uh, on my website, or um, in this case, um, since I ship out these buckets and there's empty space in here, I also include some flyers uh, to my customers in there. So um, those are some of the different ways that I partner with companies to be able to promote their product and their brands and then also be able to help my farm with um, working smarter and not harder. Okay. Let me ask you a question because a lot of times students will watch this and I want to inspire students, get students to realize that their ideas are marketable. Uh -huh. When you created the bucket, did you have any hesitation about bringing it to the market? Uh, no, I, I figured it was more important for me to bring it to the market um, and then sort of adapt it over time and sort of um, figure it out as I, as I go. Um, so it would definitely was a learning curve, um, figuring out, oh, this bucket doesn't work that well. Okay, I need to try this other bucket and stuff. So there was um, a lot of iterations happening. Okay. So let's talk about you as an entrepreneur. What is the greatest enjoyment? What is it, the reward that you get from being an entrepreneur? So um, I would say uh, recently there was a customer that came to me at the farmer's market and said, your whole chicken that I purchased last week tastes exactly like grandma's chicken. The, and she's like, I can't purchase that in the store. And it was like her telling me that um, just really made it worth it when it's a rainy Saturday morning and I don't want to get up and do the chores and 
move the the chickens around on my pasture and stuff. Um, and it's just like um, that's why I'm doing that um, to be able to provide good quality meat to the Wayne County area, so that people can experience Grandma's chicken and uh, to be able to, to experience it for themselves. Okay. How many chickens do you have? So the I um, the most I had at one time this year so far was 250 birds. Okay. Um, most of those were uh, geared towards um, meat, um, but it kind of varies. Also, it's kind of tricky sometimes to count chickens because uh, you'll have some come onto the farm, you'll sell some, you'll have some go to get processed, and. Uh, and so, um, but yeah, the, the most this year has been 250 at one time. But I typically try to raise uh, the meat birds in about 100 batches, 100 bird batches at a time. Okay. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. All right. This concludes another episode of In Your Business. Today we met with farmer Brad, Brad Wood. And you know, it's really a unique business that he's in. He's enjoying everything he's doing. He's very passionate about it. He's, got, he's really got his hands on several things, including the buckets, which was his innovation. Innovation, entrepreneurship, it's a lot of fun, as Brad has illustrated. He continues to do it, and I'm going to look forward to seeing what he has in the future, because he's going to have some great stuff. So, again, thank you for watching In Your Business.